And in this lecture, we're going to be discussing iron studies, iron studies. If you guys don't know on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash mad medicine, you can go and watch our hemonk videos where we have made a playlist for you guys for the step one exam. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our channel because we're posting brand new content every single day, baby. Every single day. Yes, you heard me right every single day. So with that being said, I'm going to stop. Let's talk about iron iron in general. This is going to be a review of the previous lectures that we've already had. If you guys haven't watched them, go to our playlist on our channel and just watch them really quickly. So iron is absorbed. Uh, sorry, iron is very important for heme synthesis. It makes protoporphyrin uh, into heme. It allows for the conversion of protoporphyrin into heme because it is going to bind to protoporphyrin and, uh, and facilitate the production of heme. Now it is mainly absorbed in the gut via gut macrophages and is found in two main forms. You have heme iron found in meat and it is easily absorbed and then you have non-heme iron which is in the Fe2 plus state which is by aided by vitamin C and when you take iron tablets you are most likely taking uh, this non-heme iron. Iron is always bound to protein in the blood like transferrin and ferritin. Very very important because it prevents uh, iron from creating toxic radicals and hurting our body. Now, with that being said, you need to know these iron proteins. Very, very important. Very high yield stuff for step one. We've discussed this in depth in our previous lectures, so go check it out. But really quickly, you got transferrin in your body that allows for the transport of iron in the blood. It, it's going to take iron from your blood to your gut, sorry, your bone marrow and liver macrophages. You have ferritin, which is the iron storage protein that's found intracellularly mainly. It's also found in the blood, also found in intracellularly in the liver and bone marrow macrophages. That's what iron binds to to become stored within a cell. Then you have ferroportin. This is the only known GI transport protein. The way I like to remember it is iron, ferroportin is a port for iron to go through uh, when it comes to uh, entering our body. It's not a channel, it's still a protein. I'm just simplifying it for you guys. Don't get that mixed up. It's just a memory hook, okay? And then you have hepcidin. Hepcidin is very, very important, and I should have put this in red, but whatever. Uh, just understand, hepcidin is one of the highest yield things that people always forget. They don't hold it in the back of their mind. They don't remember it, and when the time comes, when crunch time comes, and you got three minutes on the clock, you got to take your shot, they end up missing it because they don't remember what hepcidin does. Hepcidin is secreted by the hepatic parenchymal cell. It's secreted from our liver, and it is a key regulatory factor of the entry of iron into circulation in the mammals. And the reason why is because it is going to block ferroportin. Okay, it's going to block ferroportin and it's going to degrade ferroportin. It's going to prevent iron from going through our body, from being transported in our body. And because of this, it is an antibacterial. It prevents bacteria from accessing our iron stores and it makes the environment a lot harsher. So definitely understand all those proteins. And now we're going to talk about iron measurements. Iron can be measured in our blood based off of two of those proteins and some values related to those proteins. So first, you have uh, serum iron levels. So this is just the amount of iron you have, Fe2+, plus you have in your serum, in your blood. Then you have total iron binding capacity. This is essentially a measurement of the protein transferrin. Remember, transferrin is going to bind to iron and take it to your liver and bone marrows. So right now, you are just measuring the amount of transferrin in your serum. Then you have percent saturation. Percent sat is going to relate to transferrin, and it's going to tell you how much of the transferrin is bound to iron. That's all it's telling you, how much transferrin is bound to iron. And then finally, you have serum ferritin. So the two proteins you are looking at are going to be transferrin, and ferritin. Now with all of this combined, you're going to have a good picture of what is happening in our blood and what issues the patient might be dealing with. So let's talk about these iron study findings. This is very, very high yield and we're going to end our lecture today based off of these, uh, uh, these findings and what you should know from the iron measurement studies. This is the highest yield stuff and this is the main topic of the, the lecture. So let's start talking. The first, the first state that we're gonna talk about is iron deficiency. In this case, you're gonna have a deficiency of iron. This is the primary problem that's happening. That's why we have it in red. This is the primary issue. You have a decrease in your serum iron. That is the main thing. Now, because you have a decrease in your serum iron, your body, your macrophages in your bone marrow and your gut are going to say, and your liver are going to say, holy crap, I don't have enough iron. I need to go out and get more iron. So your body is going to end up increasing the production of 
transferrin because it wants to bring more iron in to your body. Now keep in mind, in iron deficiency anemia, especially late stage, you're not gonna only have a decrease in your serum iron levels, you're also gonna have a decrease in your intracellular iron stores. So if you have a decrease intracellularly, if you don't have enough iron in your body, you're not gonna need as much ferritin, right? Because you don't have enough iron intracellularly, your body's gonna say, why am I producing so much ferritin? Let's cut this out. Yo, we don't need this, we gotta chill, we gotta make it more productive for ourselves. let's stop producing ferritin. So you're gonna have a decrease in ferritin. Now, because you have such a decrease in your iron and such an increase in your total iron binding capacity, your percent saturation is going to go completely down because remember, this is the amount of iron divided by TIBC. That is what's happening. You have a decrease in iron and increase in TIBC, and that's going to lead to a complete drop in your, uh, 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 your percent sat. That is iron deficiency anemia, straightforward. Think about what's happening, especially in late stage iron deficiency anemia. Then you have hemochromatosis, the opposite end of the spectrum where you have a shit ton of iron. Again, this is the primary issue happening with hemochromatosis as far as iron studies are concerned. You have an increase in your serum iron. The that's the main problem that's happening. Um, we're not talking about the absorption or the issue with hemochromatosis, we're talking about the iron studies specifically. So, because you have an increase in Fe2+, plus in your serum iron, your body is then going to say, yo, we got to calm down, we have too much iron, and I got too much iron within me, I don't need this much iron, so your body is going to decrease your total iron binding capacity. Your transferrin levels are going to go down. And because your transferrin goes down, uh, and you have so much iron in your body because you have so much iron in your body specifically and you have that iron is being transported into your cell, your intracellular amount of ferritin and your circulating amount of ferritin in your body is going to go up. It's going to be increased. Now, what does that mean for percent sat? Pretty straightforward. Is you're going to have an increase in Fe2+, plus. you're going to have a decrease in TIBC, you're going to have a, a significant increase in percent saturation. That is the main thing you are looking at. Hemochromatosis, these two are pretty straightforward. If you have decreased iron, you can work through the processes of how iron is transported into the body and what it's gonna to do to our body. And if you have increased iron, you can do the same. And you can come to these uh, findings very intuitively, very straightforward. Now, the other two types of iron uh, issues that can occur that you need to know for step one are gonna be a little bit more confusing. And in my opinion, I just like to memorize them because they don't really make a uh, complete sense uh, when you're looking at them really quickly. So let's talk about anemia of chronic disease. In this, you're going to have a decrease of iron. That's definitely happening because you have a chronic disease. If it's an infection, a chronic infection, whatever is happening, you will have decrease in your iron levels as well as a decrease in your total iron binding capacity. And the reason mainly why is that our body has designed a uh, uh, evolutionary mechanism to to store our iron within our, our cells of the body. And that prevents pathogens from actually getting that amount of iron. Now, because we are trying to store the, 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 the iron within our body, we're going to have an increase in ferritin. And this is where everything is going to make sense, okay? In anemia of chronic disease, you probably have some sort of pathogen out there that's affecting the, the person. And uh, in this case, that pathogen is probably going to need iron. Like we talked about earlier, hepcidin is really useful. But you can also look at ferritin. What ends up happening in anemia of chronic disease is that your body says, yo, we have something going on that shouldn't be going on. Right, we have someone or something here that shouldn't be here. It's using up this iron. We need to try to control it. And that that uh, pathogen might be taking iron away from the intracellular stores. So essentially, you are going to have an increase in ferritin. Ferritin is going to allow for intracellular storage of iron. Now, when you have an increase in ferritin, right, you are going to have a decrease in iron overall. This is because of the pathogen. Okay. And you don't want to have more circulating, uh, uh, you don't want to have more circulating iron, so you're also going to have a decrease in total iron binding capacity. Anemia of chronic disease, the main issue happening is the increase in ferritin, mainly because, and this is how I always told myself, this is how it became very clear, and we're not clear, but very easy to memorize for step one. In anemia of chronic disease, you your body is competing against some sort of pathogen for that iron, and because it's competing, you have this decrease in iron that's occurring. Now, your body says, yo, I need more iron in my 
cells, not in your cells. Uh, screw the pathogen. So it's going to primarily increase the uh, ferritin levels to get more iron in the cells. And that's how I remembered it. Then we have pregnancy and uh, oral contraceptive use. In this case, this is not a real uh, uh, iron issue that's happening. Remember, we talked about this. You're not really going to have a decrease in iron. You're not going to have any sort of anemia based off of OCP in pregnancy. And this is because when you look at your normal level of ser uh, uh, iron, serum iron, it's going to be completely normal. But your TIBC, your transferrin levels are going to be high. Pregnancy, OCP use increases your total iron binding capacity, your transferrin level. Right. So what does that mean? Because you are having uh, an increase in your total iron binding capacity, essentially you are binding more iron that's available. Right. That's what's happening. Now, you are also going to have normal ferritin because your intracellular stores aren't low. You have normal Fe2+, plus, you have normal serum iron, you have normal intracellular stores. You just have an increase in TIBC, transferrin amounts high. So overall, this is going to lead to a decrease in percent saturation, a decrease in percent saturation. That is what is happening. So let's just recap. Iron deficiency anemia, you have a decrease in iron, which means you're going to have an increase in uh, total iron binding capacity, transferrin, and inside your cell, you're also going to be decreased with iron, so you're going to have decreased ferritin, causing a decrease in percent saturation. Hemochromatosis is the complete opposite of iron deficiency anemia, literally the complete opposite. Anemia of chronic disease, the main issue is your body is competing for that, uh, that iron, so it ends up creating more ferritin to get more uh, iron out of your, your, your bloodstream and into your body's cells instead of the pathogen cells, and that is what's happening. You have increase in ferritin, and then in pregnancy and OCP, everything really is going to be normal except for TIBC. You have an increase in total iron binding capacity. It's not really a pathogenic state. It just makes you think that you have uh, an anemia or something happening that's not normal or an iron deficiency happening that's not really normal. Everything is normal in pregnancy and OCP. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Instagram at mad.medicine where we post some crazy videos and uh, you can follow me in my day-to-day -day life, how everything goes. You can follow me on Twitter at It's Mad Medicine and you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we will pop up.